All right, welcome everyone to this video talking specifically about how chemical equilibrium responds to a change in temperature. So <clears throat> we're going to look at right how chemical equilibrium changes of temperature, and we're going to do that by deriving this Van Hoff equation. Okay. And we're going to start with the relationship we had in a previous video, right, where the natural log of the equilibrium constant is related to the free energy of the reaction, okay, divided by RT. Right. I'm going to use the fact that the free energy change for a reaction under standard conditions is related to the enthalpy change minus T times delta S. Okay. And so simplifying that, right, we get ln of K um, right, is related with minus delta H over RT plus delta S divided by R. Okay. Right. <clears throat> and we're going to assume for the sake of this um, you know, problem that enthalpy and entropy are independent of temperature. So <clears throat> the change in the equilibrium constant with respect to a change in temperature, right? Sorry about that. Uh, is just going to be then equal to delta H divided by RT squared, right? So I just take the derivative of this equation with respect to T, okay? And I have D ln of K dT is equal to delta H divided by RT squared, okay? I mean, and then rewrite this equation by changing some variables here, okay, and have t going to 1 over t, so that I can just simplify this as this equation here. The d ln of k um, d 1 over t is equal to minus delta h of r, okay? So these are the exact same equations, but the nice thing about that second form, right, is it directly shows the fact that if I do a plot of the natural log of k versus 1 over temperature, the slope of that plot will equal delta H of the reaction divided by R, right? Which is a very convenient way of trying to get the enthalpy change for a chemical reaction, right? By plotting the change, the natural log of the um, equilibrium constant of that reaction for one of our temperature, okay? Um, <clears throat> now going back to kind of the original form that we had, right? Kind of try to analyze this form, right, and see you know, if I have an exothermic reaction, so delta H is less than zero, right? That means that that slope d ln of k dt is less than zero, right? Which tells me to say temperature increases, k has to decrease, or if temperature decreases, k has to increase, right? Um, right? And so if I have a system where k decreases, right? K is products over reactants, which means more reactants are being formed, right? And less products are um, being formed, right? Um, and so for an exothermic reaction, right, if I increase temperature, K decreases, which means the, um, I get more reactants at equilibrium. So that for an exothermic reaction, right, the reaction shifts to the left, right, I form more reactants at higher temperature, okay? Um, and you can redo this same kind of thought for endothermic reactions and things of that nature, right? Another way to think of it is if I have a reaction A going to B, right, say at equilibrium, right, if it's exothermic, that, that you know, the heat Q here um, is kind of a product, right? It's given off, okay? So if I increase temperature, I'm effectively increasing heat, okay? And so an increase in temperature increases a product, right? Which then increases its chemical potential, which causes the reaction to shift to the left, right? And so you have kind of the same type of analysis. If you want to think of um, an exothermic versus endothermic reaction having heat as a reactant or product, right, to then talk about... Um, how it might shift. Now, if delta H is independent of temperature, right, we can integrate out this Van Hoff equation for some initial final temperature to get this equation here, okay, which is just that the lo natural log of the final K over the initial K is just equal to minus delta H of the reaction divided by R times the difference of one over the temperatures, right? And so this Van Hoff equation, okay, which I've circled here, gives us a relationship between how temperature changes affects an equilibrium constant, right? Um, right, and the question is whether or not it increases or decreases with temperature depends on whether or not the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. 